Hi everyone, this is Steven from YogaWorks. Welcome to your practice. We're going to be doing a super shoulder flow. If you like to move in a quite active way and you want to create a spacious but strong and stable feeling around the whole shoulders, the upper back and the chest area, then this practice is for you. We're going to be starting with a gentle warm up where we'll just sort of meet the, um, the actors of our play, what we're going to be working with and then we'll start to move a bit more continuously through some uh, adapted sun salutations and a couple of standing poses. So let's get straight into it. We're going to be starting with the cactus arms. Spread your fingers wide. Have the elbows about 90 degrees at shoulder height. And then just lean the, the forearms and the elbows a little bit back behind you. Just feel how this creates a nice opening in the front of the chest and the shoulders. But we don't have to start in a very intense way, so keep it a little bit mild for now. And then just place right elbow under the left, eagle arms. Option one is bring the hands together, lift the elbows a bit. If this is not possible, then just go the, the top arm goes straight and you're pulling it in with the right arm. Arm. Otherwise, if you can, have the palms touch each other and then lift the elbows a bit and press the forearms away from the face as you press them into each other. A couple of breaths here. We're trying to get into the, the strong muscles and the inner border of the shoulder blades between that area and the spine. It's a bit of a hard area to get to, it's often a bit overlooked. But this is one of those poses that really hits that spot. Nice and open into cactus arms. A bit of space broadness in the front body. And then left elbow on the right. Eagle arms if you can. If that's not possible, then just straighten the right arm and pull it in with the left arm. Similar, um, similar stretch which will target the similar area but slightly different for all um, openness in the shoulder. So just choose the one that works for you. If you've got eagle arms, then lift the elbows a bit, move the hands and forearms away from the face, and just squeeze your forearms, your wrists, your elbows into each other a bit. Be nice and broad in the upper back, and just feel that the shoulder blades are sliding a bit apart and in between them there's a nice little stretch or opening. And then open it up again. Press the elbows back behind you. Now keep this, rotate the arms down, this is internal rotation. Keep that and slide the hands closer together. You might be able to hold your wrists, your forearms. Or if you wiggle a little bit side to side, maybe the opposite elbows. Any one of those is fine. And then once you've got this, sit straight up. Make sure the shoulders are not bunching forward. And then try to push the forearms a little bit into your back. And, and fill out your lower back against the pressure of the forearms. So often we compensate a little bit with the spine if we do something... Um, a bit challenging for the shoulders, like this, moving the shoulders behind us and into internal rotation. So often the spine might react by going to a back bend. It's a normal thing, but we're trying to minimize that a bit by using that tactile pressure of the forearms against the lower back. One more deeper breath. Slowly release. Nice, then go right arm up, stretch it up to the ceiling and then bend the elbow so that your hand goes behind the neck or the head. But for this little warm up, we don't want to be touching the neck or the head with that right hand, so keep it hovering away from your body, which is going to require a little bit more strength. It might be less of a stretch, but it's going to require more strength. Then take the left arm out to the left. Turn your palm back and then bend the elbow again. Now go behind your lower back, but again, see if you can not touch the lower back or the mid back or whatever you are 
hovering. Again, it's going to require more strength here. And then straighten both arms and release. Lift the left arm. Bend the left elbow. So you're using the, the bicep to contract here. Then hover the left hand behind your neck or your back somewhere or your head. Reach the right arm to the right. Turn the palm back and lift the hand without touching your back. So the back of the hand is away from the lower or the mid back or wherever it is. Hover here. The side is harder for me. So just notice where you're at and release. We'll go one more to each side. Lift the right arm. Now we can do both at the same time because you've done it before. Hover the hands and hold. Don't let the head push forward. Just have a neutral spine and neck as best as you can. And then straighten the arms. Rotate. Left arm up, right hand down. Bend the elbows. Keep the head straight above the neck and the shoulders. Hover and slowly release. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. Nice. Come into hands and knees. Just stack the shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. And then aim for neutral spine as best as you can. Nice. So we're not in a back bend, we're not in a rounded shape. We're as close to neutral as we can sense. And then keep that. Start to drop the chest in between your, your upper arms. And keep the elbows straight so you keep pushing the mat. Now this will have the effect that the shoulder blades are squeezing together on the back. Now keep the neutral spine as best as you can. Start to lift the chest up, lift, 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 push the hands into the mat until the upper back is nice and full and round. Try not to tuck the tailbone under, so we're keeping this in the, the upper part of the spine and the shoulder blades. And then we'll do this a few times, lower the chest, lift the chest. So it's kind of like a scapular push-up, you could say. There might be a bit of spinal movement, but we're trying to minimize that so that it's more of a shoulder blade sliding apart and together onto your back, really. Try to keep the shoulder blades a bit down the back so they don't hunch up to the ears. One more. And back to neutral. Now lift the shoulders towards the ears. This is lifting the shoulder blades, elevating them, and then draw the shoulder blades down the back. Imagine you're sticking your neck out a little bit more as you do this. And then shoulders to ears, and shoulder blades down the back. One more. Lift the shoulder blades and press them down. Now we'll combine this into a little circle where you roll the shoulder blades around, or you circle your shoulders around, that's going to be the effect. And the effect is also going to be that the chest will sort of lower and lift and come a little bit forward and go a little bit back. Now, it's a closed chain movement because we fix the hands in one place. Just notice how different that feels and change direction of the circles. It's also nice to do this without the hands down, but it's going to be a bit more effective. We have something to push against with uh, this setup. Nice. And then slowly release. Keep the hips above your knees here. Walk the hands a big step forward. And then just walk your right hand to the right a bit. And where the right hand was, place the left hand there. And then ever so slightly lower the chest down towards the mat. Maybe the forehead touches, maybe doesn't. That's uh, not very important here. But what we do want to do is grip the mat a bit with your left fingertips and press that left hand down. Otherwise, not very much is going to happen here. And then lean the rib cage a little bit over to the left. 
another breath or so in this version of puppy pose we went over to one side and then slowly come up let's take it to second side right hand in the top left corner of the mat left hand can just go off uh, wherever it goes on the left and then push that right hand down and start to lower the chest to wherever it goes press the right hand down onto the mat grip a little bit with the fingertips and you should feel quite a significant stretch under the right armpit and into the right side body you can even expand the right rib cage a bit to get into the side a little bit more take another breath here and then slowly come back to center downward facing dog so we've done some good shoulder warm-ups some closed chain shoulder circles some active stretches in the beginning so hopefully you feel a little bit of space in the shoulder joints already and then in your downward lift the heels high and allow both heels to drop over to the left side so that your feet are in one line with each other and then just press the mat away lift the right hip up 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 and lean the hips a little bit back behind you push that right hand down really nice way to get into the similar area as the last stretch but it's a bit more active because there's more weight on the hands return to the middle in your down dog lift the heels lower the heels to the right toes to the left and lift the hips up and lean them a little bit back push your left hand down and feel the stretch in the left side body now slowly back to center start to walk the feet forward to the front of the mat bend the knees slightly i like hip distance apart for the feet it just feels good and then if you like to you clasp your hands behind the lower back and just lift the hands a bit away from your back body hang the head down and just notice naturally the shoulders want to droop down towards your ears with gravity it's quite normal but for this practice draw the shoulder blades a little bit down the back which is actually up so away from the floor so you feel a bit more space in the top of the shoulders and the neck one more deeper breath exhale release the bind hang your arms down put a good bend in the knees and then do a slow roll up into standing there's no rush nice mountain pose top of the mat we'll move through a couple of sand salutations with some extra shoulder work built in here we go inhale lift the arms and reach up Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, flat back. Have your hands to your shins and lift the back body up. Exhale, step your right foot back. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, lift the arms. Low lunge. Exhale, just go to downward facing dog. Step back. Good. Inhale, shift forward to plank pose exhale slowly lower down onto your belly come into sphinx palms together in prayer pose elbows down chest forward shoulder a little bit back that's it and tuck your toes forearm plank and walk your toes a bit closer to dolphin pose don't walk your toes all the way in we want to keep a little bit of distance so that the shoulders are behind the elbows they're not trying to stack on top we're not trying to do forearm balance although this would be a good preparation for this of course and then walk your toes back forearm black lower down sphinx one inhale exhale release downward facing dog Inhale in down dog, press the thighs back behind you. Exhale, step your right foot forward, lower the left knee down. 
Inhale, let the arms float up. Low lunge. Exhale, step to the front and relax. Inhale, rise, go all the way up. Stretch your fingers up. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, flat back, hands to shins. Lift more than a little bit. Lift halfway up, at least to hip height. Then exhale, the left foot back, lower the left knee. Inhale, arms into low lunge. Exhale, find your downward facing dog. Push the mat away and grip your fingers a little bit, like we've done before in some of the warm-up poses. Inhale, shift forward, plank. Exhale, lower to the floor. Sphinx pose. Elbows on the shoulders. Hands in Anjali Mudra, the prayer position. Tuck your toes, lift the hips. A moment for on plank. Walk the toes in a bit, but mainly lift the hips up and then press your chest towards the knees or towards the feet as you ground down through the forearms, the elbows, and the outer wrists. Back to forearm plank. Sphinx, pull the elbows towards you. Release, downward facing dog. However you get there, you can push up through plank or find another way. Inhale in down dog, stretch the arms out. Exhale, step the left foot forward, lower the right knee down. Inhale, let the arms lift. Exhale, step to the front and fold. Inhale, rise all the way to the top. One more round, both sides. Exhale, relax in forward fold. Inhale, flat back, lift halfway, nice and high. Exhale, the right foot steps back. Keep the right knee lifted this time. Lift your arms and then bend the right knee a bit. This just helps us get a little bit more into the, the quad in the front of that right hip. Good, lower the hands. Down dog first. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, lower down. You know the drill. Sphinx pose, hands together. Forearm plank, press the floor down with your elbows. And then lift the hips. Walk closer as needed, but don't try to go as close as possible with your feet. Sometimes we do that, but that's more as a prep for forearm balance. This time we want overhead shoulder work. So press the elbows down. Push your chest towards your toes. And then walk the toes back out, forearm plank. Sphinx. Do a brief cobra pose. Elbows in, chest forward, shoulders down. Exhale, down dog, press back. Inhale, press the thighs back. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Bend the left knee a little bit, but not all the way down. High lunge, lift the arms. Step forward, relax, forward fold. Inhale, rise, all the way up. Exhale, last side, and we'll change it up. Fold forward, flat back, inhale. Exhale, the left foot steps back. Bend the knee a little bit, but don't go all the way down. Crescent, lift the arms. Good, lower the hands. Back to downward facing dog. Inhale takes you to plank. Exhale takes you down, take your time. Elbows down, chest up, sphinx. Tuck toes, forearm plank. Same thing, walk a little bit in, lift the hips high, press the chest through the arms as it were, press the elbows down and lift. Most of the body is the same as in down dog, except we're on the forearms. Toes further back, forearm plank. 
Lower down a moment in Sphinx. Inhale. Exhale down. Place your hands for Cobra. Inhale, roll shoulders back. Chest forward, Cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the hips. Inhale here, stretch the arms out. Exhale, left foot forward. Little bend in the right knee. Inhale, lift the arms, high lunge. Exhale, step forward, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold forward. Change it up. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, go to down dog. Remember, down dog, telescope the arms. Grip the fingers a bit. Press the chest towards the heels. And tuck the lower ribs in a little bit. Good, then step right foot forward. Turn the left heel down, warrior one. Get a bit of space between the heels, so just wiggle that right foot a little bit wider. Or the left foot, or both. Nice, from here, cactus arms, open the fingers wide, press the elbows back behind you. Nice, and right elbow, under left, lift the elbows slightly, press the forearms away from you, round the upper back and bend the right knee a little bit extra if you've got space. Super strong through the back leg. If warrior one doesn't feel good, you can also do high lunge, which is the same or similar at least with the left heel up. So you'll be on the ball of the back foot. Good. Reach your hands back. Bend the elbows. Have your hands on the lower back. First move the shoulders back. Then Start to straighten a little bit more through the arms, maybe all the way, depends a little bit on your shoulder range. And maybe lift the hands slightly further away from the lower back. You could stay here, or for a moment, humble warrior, fold inside the right knee or towards the right knee, wherever you end up, it's okay. Deeper breath in. Exhale, release the hands, down dog, step back. Step the left foot forward. Right heel down, a bit of space between the feet, warrior one. Or if that doesn't feel good, you've got high lunge instead. Cactus the arms. Left elbow, bring it under the right. Eagle arms, you remember the modification, if that doesn't feel good or it's unaccessible, pull the right arm in with your left forearm. Otherwise, round the back, lift the elbows, forearms away from your face. Super strong back leg. Release, reach the hands back, bend the elbows, hands a little bit higher on your lower back. Elbows back and the shoulders back. Keep that. Start to pull the arms a little bit straighter. Bend the front knee if you've still got space. Hold here or fold towards that left foot or left knee or wherever you end up. Strong, stable through the lower body, through the feet. Open, free, flexible through the upper body. Release the hands. Downward facing dog. Step back. Take a breath. And then step right foot forward. Turn left heel down. Warrior two this time. Open the arm. Stretch the fingertips away from each other, make the arms as long as possible. And then open the palms of the hands and wring the arms out. Even so much that the thumb starts to turn back behind you. And then turn the palms down. Keep rotating the arms further and further and further. 
until the times go back behind you or wherever you end up in the second direction. Ring out like a dirty dishcloth. Nice, open. I don't know why I said dirty. It just felt like a good thing to say at the moment. Open the palms, rotate, 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 rotate. And then turn the palms down. Rotate as far as you can. Slowly release. It's a good shoulder work. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. And then cactus arms. Rotate the hands down. Keep the elbows a bit up. And then rotate the hands up. This is external rotation. And then move back internal rotation. Nice. Release the back arm. Have the back of the right hand behind your lower back. And then with the other hand, hold the elbow or your arm. And ever so slightly, pull the elbow a little bit alongside your, your body. Don't go very hard. This is a, it's a bit of a weak position for the shoulder. So we don't want to put excessive pressure on this. And at the same time, with your, the back of your right hand, press into your lower back. Option one, just stay here. Option two, lean a bit forward. See if you can hook this right elbow inside that right thigh. And then roll the chest and the torso a little bit back. So it's a version of side angle pose. Good. Slowly lift up. Let's just swap straight to the second side. Turn the right heel in. Turn the left toes out. Bend that left knee. We've got warrior two on the second side. Stretch the arms. It's some good hip and leg work, but that's not our focus. We're using this as a, a platform to do some good shoulder work while getting a, a good practice in at the same time because we're staying in this pose for quite a while. As you've noticed, open the palms, rotate, rotate, rotate the arms. Nice. Turn the palms down. Keep going until you stop. One more time each side. Surprisingly hard, isn't it? This is called axial rotations of your arms. Open the chest and then internal rotation. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And release the arms for a moment. Legs stay strong. Cactus arms. This is external rotation, especially if you lean the hands a little bit back behind you. And then rotate down, but keep the elbows up. Stop wherever you stop. One more time. External. Lift. Internal. Turn down. Release the back arm. Left, back of the left hand, don't crank the wrist in any funny angle, mostly like this. Keep it a bit strong, place the back of the left hand on your lower back. Push the back of the left hand forward. Hold the upper arm wherever you can, maybe the elbow. And gently help the elbow a bit alongside the side of the ribcage. Don't crank unless really hard. Either stay here or lean a bit forward, maybe the left elbow hooks inside the thigh, version of side angle with internal rotation in the left arm. Three, two, one. Slowly release, lower the hands, inhale, step to plank, exhale, lower down. Guess what? Sphinx. Palms together. Pull the elbows towards you. And then you've guessed it, it's been a while. Tuck your toes under, forearm blank, yay. I can just um, feel the enthusiasm through the screen. Please, can we do another dolphin? Okay, fine. Step the toes in a little bit closer. Press the elbows down, telescope your hips up and away from the rib cage from the shoulders and lengthen, push the chest through. Breathe as you press the mat down with your arms and with your feet. 
Maybe for this last one, you can walk a little bit closer, like we often do in this pose. It's nice to do different variations of the pose so you don't get stuck into one little thing that you think you should do all the time. There's no such thing in yoga. Walk the toes back, forearm plank, sphinx pose, and release. Roll over onto your back. Set up for bridge. In this bridge pose, just place your feet slightly wider. So if you look on the side of your hips, you can just see your feet there. So slightly wider than common. You will thank me later. This happens to feel really good for a lot of people. Nice. Then have your hands alongside the hips. Push your feet down, lift the hips to wherever they go. Lift, 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 lift. Couple of breaths here. Allow the front body, quads, front of hips, belly, chest to expand. And then slowly lower back down. Slow breath in. Slower breath out. We'll do one more round. You can repeat bridge pose. If you want to do a wheel pose, then um, go right ahead if that's part of your practice and it feels good at this moment. We've done a good preparation for the body to do a wheel pose now. Or if you want to do another bridge pose with a slight variation, you can do that with me, lift the hips high, and then I like to hold the edges of the mat and pull a bit with my hands. And this usually helps to lift the chest and the hips a little bit higher. Press the feet down, hollow the back body and lift the front up. Either you're in wheel or in a version of bridge and then wherever you are, start to slowly come down. Place the feet nice and wide, they're already quite wide. And then just windscreen wipe the knees a couple of times left to right, just to release some tension from the lower back and the rest of the spine, outer hips. And then just briefly stretch the legs out, stretch the arms out. Shavasana, how quickly can you relax? This is a short practice but it's still good to take a moment to receive the benefits of your work. Just look at what you've done. You stepped up to your practice and for yourself. In a short period of time, you created this level of connection, of confidence, calm presence of freedom. Start to take a few deeper breaths. If you've got more time, then please, by all means, stay here for a bit longer. Right here, Shavasana, or maybe seated meditation could work really well after this. If you need to go, wiggle your hands and your feet. Bend your knees, roll over to one side. And make yourself back up into sitting. Place your hands together in front of the chest. Touch your hands to your forehead, to your heart, and bow to yourself on the mat. Namaste everyone, thank you so much for practicing, I hope your shoulders feel nice and open, you've got some new space to breathe into, and I hope to see you here again soon. Take care.